Grand Theft Auto, my favorite franchise ever made. The time has come, guys, for years you have asked me which my favorite GTA games are, and I finally have an answer. I started my GTA journey in 2002 with GTA 3 and have been a huge fan of them all ever since. I have not played the first few games in the series and that's why they won't be on this list. But hey, at least I can show case which my 10 favorite ones are. If you disagree, that's great, let me know what your list looks like in the comments below. An absolutely no surprise to anyone who has followed me for any significant amount of time. I have expressed my distaste in VCS numerous times throughout the years, so it goes on the bottom. I know many of you might be outraged by this, but hear me out here. Sure, VCS has one of the best stories ever. Most characters are incredible, they're funny, charismatic, goofy sometimes even scary. The city and the setting are actually my favorite. Rockstar Games recreated the 80s perfectly well with this title. Anything from the music, clothing, weather, colors, layout, mission variety and everything else is top notch. And I wish more games were set in this time period. My problem comes with the buggy nature of the game. Very often VCS would crash for me, a certain vehicle would get stuck, traffic could disappear, missions would not complete, and much more. The fact that you cannot mod your problems away like you can on the PC titles is also a bad sign. Many of these issues could have been resolved by now if this was not a console title, including the horrific controls. Many of you know that I despise controllers and this is also a big reason why I rank it so low. When the controls don't feel right, I don't have a big desire to play. Apart from that, as a completionist myself, the 100% completion in this game is a pain to do. What happened to level 12? Why was it increased to 15? Why are the side missions so many? Why driving this boat to the lockup took 25 minutes? Why can some empire types get locked off, preventing you from getting 100%? Why? <laughs> Oh, why does this crappy mission take two flippin' hours? These are only a few of my problems I have with Vice City Stories, but hey, the rest of it is perfect. Jonathan Wars is the weirdest one in the franchise for me. No longer do we have voice lines, everything is written to us, and we can imagine how all these people actually sound like. As a person who has not played the original 2D GTA games, this title did not sit well with me. Driving feels unpredictable because you can't see where you're going. Aiming your gun is also very limited since you can't be precise with your shots. Hell, even VCS and LCS 2 console titles allow you to aim freely and do headshots if you want. As opposed to VCS though I had no problems with the game from a technical standpoint. It was a great experience throughout. The problem is the style and the limited nature of the game. I have been a big fan of Sleeping Dogs for years and I have desperately wanted a game set in the Yakuza look-alike criminal world, where they talk about honor, katanas are present and there's a lot of reference to Chinese and Japanese culture, so in the storyline aspect Chinatown Wars was way up there of my favorites. Apart from that, all these minigames were a good addition I guess? They're interesting the first 5 times, but then just get annoying. So annoying that I ended up entering a vehicle, getting out immediately and getting back in just so I can skip the hot wire mechanic. I just couldn't be bothered. But things such as the Molotov minigame and other side missions are very unique and I appreciate their addition. This makes Chinatown Wars unique and stand out from the crowd.
the first DLC of the beloved GTA 4 game many of you would place in number one. This edition introduces us to Johnny Clevitz, who is a very prominent member of a biker gang. They completely nailed it, guys. The immersion factor is huge. You feel like you are a biker just by looking at your surroundings, the way the characters talk, behave, dress, and who they interact with. The way the story goes, you can kind of predict what any of these people would do, what they would say. That's definitely not a bad thing, and I think it's a great addition to the franchise. Being an add-on, however, makes it a bit limited. Now, there are games out there which are much shorter and hollow, but advertise themselves as a full quality game. Well, no, this right here, this right here is quality for such a low price, so few hours of gameplay, they crammed in so many nice features and side activities, which would put many full-on games to shame. However, comparatively, I just have to place it this low. I don't find this story better than GTA 4. There's not much mayhem as there is in the Valley of Gay Tony, the driving is the same as it is in both other games, and it's also shorter with a few more technical problems than the rest. Otherwise, this is the peak of the sea of expansions flooding the market. This is how you make proper quality content. Good job on this, Rockstar Games. And here is the other handheld centered game in the franchise, Liberty City Stories. You heard me before, the controls in LCS are no different to VCS, and I do not like them. Crouching, climbing, cover and fast and free camera movement is non-existent. Ok then, why do I like it more than VCS? Well, first of all, the game is solid. I have never encountered a game-breaking glitch before. You cannot get locked out of 100% completion no matter what you do. And above all, the city is more interesting. I grew up with GTA 3. I knew the city by heart. I knew where a hostile gangs spawn, where to get weapons, armor, knew where the police stations were, the best cars and what not. When I heard that there's another game with the same city, I was on board. The twist is that every spawn location of side missions, weapons, health, armor and bribes was changed. It blew my mind because it it's exactly what I wanted. A fresh start in the same city which itself also got a few makeovers. This game was great fun for 100% unlike VCS. Unfortunately though, I cannot say the same for the story. In my opinion, it is the weakest part of the game. Throughout it, you are following the steps of a person who really doesn't care about you. The Dawn of Dawns who thinks he's a big shot. You have no freedom of choice, you are stuck following his own Orders. You start off as a scrub and you remain a scrub until the end. I felt no sense of progression in Tony's character and was not very invested in what he was doing. Even the antagonist man, who were you even after? This prick? You barely see or know him. Why should I be invested in his or your story? The mission structure was also not that great because missions felt rehashed often. But otherwise, I felt like LCS was a great game which is a great addition to the franchise. I loved seeing what happened before Claude stepped into Liberty City with Catalina. The Big, The Bad, The GTA 4. This is the game which started the new era for Rockstar Games, where reality is more important than gameplay. GTA 4 was made to be as realistic as possible while still keeping the GTA vibe we once knew. Driving is very slidey, cars feel heavy, and the stopping distance has been greatly increased. In my opinion, the weakest part of the game. I prefer the cars being grippy. I like stopping 
stopping on a dime. I don't wanna activate my brakes 3 blocks away before a turn or flying through my windshield 50 plus meters away after a crash. Sure, they added a few neat features as well, like a proper cover system which I appreciate. Unfortunately, shooting is not improved much and in fact it was downgraded severely because there are no new and interesting weapons. No minigun, flamethrower, tear gas, spray can, fire extinguisher, melee weapons are boring and so on. In my eyes when GTA 4 released I considered it as a major downgrade to the fantastic San Andreas. I followed news about it ever since it was announced, read articles, forum posts, watched videos, waited impatiently about new screenshots just to get another small glimpse of the game. I was excited guys. Well, needless to say it was not what I expected and if I didn't give it a chance I would not be talking about it right now. But here comes the story and oh boy GTA 4 story is at the very top. Absolutely incredible and most likely my favorite storyline ever was in this game. The origins, the backstory and the people in the life of Nico Bellic made this game that memorable and relatable. I love how gritty it feels, love the gangs, mafia and underground cartel. It felt very real and is exactly what the franchise needed. They never topped it since then and if only they made the gameplay as fun and as goofy as it was in San Andreas, GTA 4 would be on number 1. After all, Nico is still the best protagonist ever made for GTA. However, I can never in good conscience place it that high because of the gameplay. Where GTA 4 fails, the Ballad of Gay Tony excels. Like I mentioned, GTA 4 is all about the story. Humor is nowhere to be seen. It's very serious and wants you to feel real and sad emotions. The Ballad of Gay Tony throws that out the window and introduces APCs, helicopters with missiles, missions where you ride on a train while you get bombarded by enemies, new and exciting to use weapons, clubs where the music blasts at full force making you wanna dance along with Louise. I am generally a gameplay focused player and that's why this is on number 5 and not GTA 4. As great as Nico's story was, gameplay for me is more important. And yeah, this is still GTA 4. Cars still drive like crap. Shooting is not that intuitive. But the variety of missions, the humor, the minigames and weapons make it all worth it. Add an amazing protagonist to the mix and you have a recipe of awesome! The game with the most memorable setting, Vice City, a true masterpiece classic bringing to us what other people loved about the 80s, the fantastic music, huge phones, VCRs and so much more. The setting is one of the best ones ever used in a video game. Even after all these years the colors make the scenery look breathtaking. You can feel the Miami air just by walking around on the beach or even sailing your boat across the two islands. Vice City propelled the franchise to huge new heights. In merely months after GTA 3, Rockstar Games were able to craft this gorgeous time sync and they deserve a huge applause for that. This is when we got introduced to bikes, different clothing options, all Miami themed. We got a voiced protagonist, finally, who actually does a fantastic job, I might add. We we got into the drug empire business and saw the inner workings of the cartels and big drug barons in the universe. On top of that, many helicopters and a proper flyable plane was introduced. All this blew me away as a kid after spending so much time in the dark and limited GTA 3. Vice City looks, sounds and feels great even after all these years. Sure it's janky by today's standards, but the setting will never be topped.
Honestly guys, this is the best GTA game ever made. Yeah, I'm dead serious. It has the best graphics, weapon variety is the biggest, it is the longest, has the most side missions, has more playable characters than any GTA game beforehand, the map is the most fleshed out one, it is the most optimized GTA, and the attention to retail is through the roof. So much attention was put into it that no one can deny just how well crafted it is. On top of that, this is the best selling media product ever. Not just gaming, but ever. Numbers don't lie, guys. It is by all means a masterpiece. However, sure, GTA 5 has many flaws, like the annoying character movement. The realistic nature made it so it's more clanky to move around. Swim, climb and so on. The addition to only one city and a huge desert was also a downside, and I would have loved San Fierro or LV added here as well, but once again the map we do have looks great, and you can do so much in it, hunt, rob, fly, dive, play many sports, search for stuff, uncover mysteries and so 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 much more, it just goes on and on and on, there even is yoga for crying out loud. On top of that, all characters are amazing and add a lot of flavor to the gameplay. Wanna cause mayhem, death and destruction? Switch to Trevor, pick up a minigun and go to town. Wanna visit the hood and talk to your homies? Franklin is your boy. Wanna feel old and see what it's like to be bad in false? Play some golf with Michael. Truly a fantastic game. Grand Theft Auto 3 is in no way better than anything else I showcased so far. It is the shortest game, has a voiceless brick of a protagonist. There is no cover, no climbing, weapons are limited and are only a few. Frame rate is crap unless you unlock it and die from just walking around. You can't jump out of vehicles and so much more. Then why is it here? It's because GTA 3 truly introduced me to PC gaming. In 2002 when I got my first PC, the game was pre-installed on it. I cannot describe the feeling I got after going from this to this. My 10 year old brain could only play, think, dream about this game day in, day out. At school, at gatherings, at the seaside, when sleeping and taking a walk. It was all GTA 3 this, GTA 3 that. I hold an immense amount of nostalgia for GTA 3 and despite it being very very dated nowadays, with bad controls, story, characters and whatnot, it still holds one of the top places in my heart and I still play it with a huge smile on my face. I cannot describe the feeling I got when I beat Bomb the Base Act 2 after trying it for a full year, when I unlocked the second island, when I glitched myself to the third island myself, when I pulled out amazing stunts. All these memories are locked into my brain and from time to time I think about them when I experience something nice in a different game. Thank you, thank you so much GTA 3 for introducing me to the world of PC gaming. <laughs> ah, no. And here it comes guys, the best game in the Grand Theft Auto franchise, the game which literally changed my life. Before San Andreas I was a loser with no friends who nobody knew, after San Andreas I was a loser with no friends who built communities, helped out millions of people and who placed a mark on the internet. At first when I got the game I immediately dismissed it. It ran awfully on my PC back then at probably 20 FPS, car physics were not to my liking, the map was confusing and I didn't get the hang of the controls. 
I played it for a few hours, dropped it and went back to Vice City. About a year later I booted it up again and never looked back. Thanks to San Andreas I discovered video making. I loved it so much that I wanted to showcase my accomplishments. In time I helped build a stunting crew, which nowadays is still standing and it's also arguably the best one of them all, even though I'm no longer a member. GTA changed my taste of music. Rap was the only thing I listened to back in 2007-8. But after making this many stunt videos and interacting with metalheads in the stunting community forums, I to this day listen to metal. Finally people started noticing me. People cared about what I do and what I think. Before this game I was a nobody. Fast forward in time and my YouTube career was propelled by a few GTA San Andreas videos I made. Like I said, San Andreas literally changed my life. And of course I'm very glad I gave it another chance. It is not only my favorite GTA but my favorite game of all time. It will never be topped. I'll never experience the same feelings again from a different game and will not be able to spend 10 plus hours every single day for weeks on end once again. Thank you, thank you my YouTube audience for allowing me to still play this masterpiece because you and I know that without you watching I would not be able to play it this much nowadays. And this concludes my list guys, it got pretty deep at the end so I apologize for that, but I had to say it. It's fine if you disagree with my list, after all it's just an opinion and opinions differ. Please share your list below so I can see how your opinion differs to mine. Thank you once again for watching and a very special thank you goes to my top channel members and patrons. LMP Racing, House the Chowder, Alex Chavez, Max Robinson, Cloud Speed, SMRJ, Paris Bruce, Lane and all my other supporters on the screen. Thank you once again.